Fun fact, in second grade, I didn't know that females could be scientists until I heard about Marie Curie. And I hope that by young women recognizing the diversity at LEAP 2023, they're able to see people who look just like them, and they're able to aspire to be one of them in the future. It is incredibly important for young women like me to attend events like LEAP. One of the biggest reasons that I'm involved in science and technology, and I am so fortunate to have discovered my passion at a young age, is by seeing role models or people who look just like me also be in the fields of science and technology. Fun fact, in second grade, I didn't know that females could be scientists until I heard about Marie Curie. And I hope that by young women recognizing the diversity at LEAP 2023, they're able to see people who look just like them, and they're able to aspire to be one of them in the future. Some of my work in technology is used to help solve global problems that are personal to me. For example, I created a device to detect for lead in drinking water to tackle the issue of the lack of contamination or the lack of knowledge of contamination in places like Flint, Michigan. It uses carbon nanotube sensors and it sends all the data to your phone on a custom mobile app. I also created a device to diagnose for prescription opiate addiction using early protein detection methods. And recently, I've worked with UNICEF to build an artificial intelligence-based anti cyber service called Kindly, which works like the spell check of cyberbullying, which is a non-punitive approach towards cyberbullying and allows people to be aware of what they're sending in messages. Recently, I also had the chance to work at MIT and Harvard to look at how we can come up with new and novel gene sequencing technologies and come up with targeted lung cancer technologies as well so we're able to cure the disease faster. Along with my own work in innovation, I take this opportunity to mentor other students like me who have an idea, have a dream, but don't have the support system and don't have anyone to be able to foster it. For example, I've worked with about 70,000 students across 43 countries in six continents, and every single student that I meet comes up with a new idea and a novel way of solving a problem that's personal to them. And each and every single one of these students have a new way of thinking, and I think that's one of my favorite things about innovation is there's no set way of doing it. But I like to go over my five-step process, which is observe, brainstorm, research, build, and communicate. And those five steps is the basis of innovation, and these students take it on and make it their own. The importance of technology is making it so that it's not just something that's so foreign and out there. It should be something that's weaved into our everyday lives, not something that should be feared, but instead something that should be taught. And I think the first step to that is making it more inclusive by involving it into the curriculum of youth, right? Whether that's elementary school or middle school or even high school, right? Taking that opportunity to talk about technology in ways that the world is growing so that people learn not to fear them, but instead look at ways they can use technology technology and harness that power to come up with new life-changing solutions to solve global problems. And I think another big one is involving technology and teaching technology to people in third world countries and rural schools as well, who may not have had that opportunity to learn more about the new technology that's out there. Coming up with ideas, conceptualizing ideas, and building prototypes have no cost to it. And I think it is incredibly important to put that out there and give students that chance to take the next step. There's multiple specific problems that our generation is solving that ideally I'd one day like to solve. One of the biggest ones that I personally think is the education inequality crisis. I'd love to use technology to one day be able to tackle that in an easy manner. But along with that, I'd also love to look at contamination of our natural resources. I've worked with water, but also with air potentially, but also look at teenage mental health as that's a growing problem and something that's not taken nearly as seriously as it should be. Currently, I'm actually working on a way to detect for parasites in drinking water using genetically engineered bioelectric sensors. So I know that's a long word, but what that means is you're taking in a biology input, such as DNA or protein, coming up with an electricity output, like resistance or current. And the reason for this is I want to create a cheap, inexpensive test strip that can be used in third world places like South India or South Asia and places in Africa as well that could use some sort of device like that to be able to test their waters. 
I am really, really looking forward to LEAP this year. I think one of my biggest things that I always love to look forward to in conferences, but especially at LEAP, is wanting to learn more about the culture. I love Saudi Arabia as a whole, and I'd love to go back there. But secondly, meet the attendees, meet the speakers, and help exchange ideas. One of the biggest and best things about events and conferences is the amount of ideas and the amount of life-changing solutions that are able to come out with of it. So not only do I hopefully put my message out there for people to start learning more, but I'm also hope to take a part of that back with me back to the States and see what I can do to grow my own, you know, way of thinking, my own way of growing and the my way of growing in the way that I talk to my students when I work, run these workshops.